the importance of discharging. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. So there's an interesting thing in quite a few schools of Qigong thought. I wouldn't even say schools of Qigong thought. It's, it's more just sort of patterns that have developed as people have um, worked with different Qigong practices. And I think sometimes without a uh, really solid base of understanding of the principles behind that practice and, and you know, essentially how our energy works, um, unfortunately we've gone through a, a period of history where you know, there's always pluses and minuses. So a period of history where Qigong did start to get spread more broadly. Uh, but at the same time, there was suppression of, of, of Qigong in some parts of the world. And there, there was a lot of um, superficial teaching, which meant that people often learnt, yeah, they learnt different Qigong practices at, yeah, a superficial level. Maybe they learnt how to do the movements, maybe they learnt a little bit about how different things feel, um, but they didn't really necessarily understand what was going on underneath that. Now of course this isn't true of everyone who learnt Qigong, um, because uh, you know a, a lot of that uh, more comprehensive knowledge has been passed on, of course. Um, but a, a lot of, because of this, um, yeah, relatively superficial teaching, Again, it, it's good, it's still useful for the people who've learnt that and practiced in that way, you know, fantastic. Uh, but because of this, a few misunderstandings have cropped up and some of them have become relatively widespread in terms of what people focus on and, and work with when they're practicing Qigong. Now, something I think I've probably mentioned on this uh, Qi Life uh, YouTube channel before in one of the vlogs is, uh, in my opinion, the level and quality of Qigong teaching is really improving at the moment. Uh, I've been doing Qigong for, well, quite a while now, uh, sort of coming up on, well, I mean, my initial exposure was when I was quite young, but in terms of when I got into it and started studying, you, you know, intensively, um, coming up on 25 years, not quite 25 years yet, uh, that it's been sort of a, a really major focus of my life, my study, my practice, and so on. And during that time, I've, I've seen a lot of change from, you know, back when I first started, oh, Qigong teaching, any kind of Qigong teaching was so hard to find. Um, and then gradually there's more become available and more, and as part of this, the quality is improving. There's more and more good teachers out there who are, are te and from different traditions, you know, from you know, and they're bringing their their knowledge from different traditions, which is fantastic, and and they're teaching in a more in depth, more comprehensive way, which is which is awesome. So, you know, it's it's a a time of of qigong really flourishing, and yeah, and starting to have have a better understanding of the underlying principles. So anyway, I'll go back to one of these misconceptions that did become quite widespread um, for quite some time. And that was that a, a lot of people with their Qigong practice, they really only would focus on gathering and storing energy. Gather more energy, gather more energy, store more energy, gather more energy, store more energy. Which, you know, from a certain sense, like, yeah, okay, more energy is better. Yeah, okay, maybe. Um, but that's not really how nature works. You know, um, it's kind of like thinking more food is better. <laughs> gather more food, store more food, gather more food, store more food. That's not going to be healthy for you, is it? Right? Eating enough food, having enough energy stored in your body, both in terms of, you know, glycogen and the muscles and the liver, um, fat on the body. We do need to store some fat, right? Yep. Having enough energy stored to keep us healthy, to keep us balanced, resilient. Yeah, really important. But storing more than that doesn't seem like a healthy, natural thing, does it? Um, you, you know, I guess similar in terms of, to draw another analogy, you know, physical possessions. Yeah, it's important, healthy, it's going to make your life better uh, to have enough clothing, you know, somewhere to live, you know, all the things to take care of, the things that you need, maybe things to cook with and things to work with, tools. Great. There's a certain point of getting more stuff, more physical possessions that's useful. And then it gets beyond that to a point where it's like, well, is it doing you any good? Or does it actually start to get in your way? Uh, 
do you actually start to expend more energy on having that stuff stored than any benefit you're getting from it? You know, to the extreme, you think of hoarders who just want to hold on to everything, store it up, and they, they store, you know, not, not just really useful things like, well, furniture or tools or things like that, but they'll store plastic bags and old newspapers and, and fill their house up so much that they can barely move around in them. And th those are clearly not benefiting them at that point. They're actually um, really stopping their flow of energy, making their quality of life worse. It's a pretty extreme example, but to some extent, this also applies to energy in terms of gathering it, storing it within our body. Yeah, there's a certain amount that we want to gather energy, build it up, have a base of energy, have enough energy through our whole body, have a reserve of energy that we can draw on. But trying to gather and store more than that actually causes us problems. It actually causes um, the energy to become blocked, to become stagnant, and can create a whole lot of issues for us and actually stops the energy from flowing freely. So often what we need to do in order to make ourselves healthier, in order to make our energy flow more free, more strong, more vital, is we actually need to discharge energy. We need to let it go. We need to clear out energy that has become blocked, has become stagnant. And by doing that, one, it helps us to get rid of any excess, if we have excess at different times. And two, it then allows fresh energy to flow through. The fresh energy often can't flow through if there's old stagnant energy stuck there. And so, so often we need to clear that out first and then we get a fresh flow of energy that keeps us in balance and harmony. So within different Qigong practices, there'll be a greater or lesser um, focus on this aspect of discharging. And it's true, a lot of Qigong practices do focus on gathering, storing energy. And historically, a lot of Qigong practices focused on gathering and storing energy. And, and a big part of this is that, um, <laughs> well, look, as, as a maybe somewhat crude analogy, you know, how much focus do you put and attention do you put on your cooking compared to your going to the toilet? tend to put a lot more focus on what food you're going to eat and so on, but the going to the toilet is still important. It's still a necessary part, the clearing out of the waste, the residue, the stuff that needs to be cleared out, right? Um, <clears throat> maybe to take a, a, a different angle on that, um, a big part of why there's often been more of a focus on gathering energy is because in the past, historically, going back 100 years, 200 years longer, most people's daily lives consisted of a lot of physical activity. And during that physical activity, they were naturally discharging a lot of energy. And so it was necessary, the role of Qigong, in order to keep them balanced, they needed to have a lot more gathering to keep them balanced. It doesn't mean that they didn't need any discharging, you know, and they, they certainly were um, specific practices for discharging, charging, clearing stagnant energy, blocked energy for sure, but more focus needed to be placed on, on gathering to build them up for, from all the energy that they were discharging and using up just during their daily activities. In the modern era, of course, for so many of us, myself included, um, our lives are much more sedentary. Yep, I teach Qigong full time, so it does mean I'm active, teaching, moving, during some parts of the day, and also with my own practice, you know, part of keeping myself healthy. But a lot of my day is spent in front of a computer. You know, one of those things in one life, dealing with different things related to running, running a Qigong school online and teaching people. And so for myself and for many of us, because we're not as active, we probably need more of a focus on discharging in this day and age than we did or we would have 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 300 years ago, when naturally we would have been getting a lot more physical activity. And so that, that aspect of discharging, it's there in different Qigong practices already. Historically, it was there. But if anything, I think it's probably more important now. It doesn't mean that that's all we're going to do is discharge. Of course, we're also going to focus on gathering fresh energy and building it up, keeping our energy balanced, circulating healthy. But the discharging is often a key thing. If, if you're struggling with some aspect of your qigong, of, of feeling the energy or bringing it into balance or ha you know, having it being fully healthy, you might want to consider, 
are you discharging enough of your energy to clear it out, to clear any stagnant energy out and allow the flow of energy to be fresh with fresh energy always coming through? Again, there are some Qigong practices that are specifically really just focused on discharging, but then there's often also within different Qigong sets of practices, some part of the practice that has, uh, well, you know, it might even just be one part of the practice where there's a part of discharging and then the rest is on gathering, on circulating and balancing and so on. Or there might be um, a part of the practice where it's actually quite subtle and there's an opportunity there to discharge if you need to, or to not, to just keep the energy in if you need to as well. So with, with experience or with an experienced teacher, you can um, identify um, where these parts of the practices are, and then you can choose yeah, what you need to focus on more. Sometimes you might need to focus more on gathering. Other times, there's probably going to be times where you're like, hey, I need to do some more of this discharging, and then you'll see the benefit that comes from that, allowing the fresh energy to flow through. We really don't need to worry about hoarding energy, right? We're surrounded by it. There's, you know, there's a vast, for all, you know, practical purposes, we could say infinite supply of energy all around us. It's really about what we're doing with that within our body, within our system. Are we allowing ourselves to take it in effectively? Are we then circulating and using it well, or is it becoming blocked and stagnant? And discharging is often a key thing that then allows that energy to flow more freely for us. All right, hopefully an interesting one for some of you. Um, I look forward to seeing you in another vlog soon.